Hey, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and I'm now answering question number three from the June 2023 International A Level LXL Pure Mathematics P2 paper. This question number three here is about a circle which has center 2, 5. Given that the point P8, negative 3 lies on the circle C, find the radius of C and find an equation for C. All right, so now the radius of a circle. Um, is given by the distance from the center of the circle, which we know, um, to any point on the circle, which we also know. All right, so we need to find that distance, and that will be the radius of the circle. So we need to know the distance between these two points, okay, between the point 2, 5, and the point 8, negative 3, for which we can use the distance formula. Okay, so we can say that the radius is going to be equal to the square root of the distance between the, the x-coordinates, which is, you can say, 2 minus 8 squared, plus the distance between the y-coordinates, which is 5 minus minus 3, which is going to be 5 plus 3 squared. Okay, so the radius is going to be the square root of, that's going to be 2 minus 8 is minus 6 squared, which is 36, plus 5 plus 3 squared, uh, which is 8 squared, which is 64, which is the square root of 100, so therefore, the radius of the circle is going to be 10 units. Okay, so there's A part 1. Okay, the radius is 10 units. All right, part 2 says find an equation for this circle C. Now, the equation of a circle is given by the formula x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared, where a and b are the x and y coordinates of the center of the circle, and r is the radius r is the radius okay so this is the center of the circle and this is the radius so we've got all of those bits of information that we need so we just write x minus the x coordinate of the center is 2 5 we know the center is 2 5 so it's x minus the x coordinate squared plus y minus the y coordinate squared equals the radius squared which is going to be 100 10 squared Okay, and it didn't tell us in which form to write it, so it's perfectly fine to leave it like this. Sometimes they might ask it in the form x squared plus bx plus y squared plus, um, you know, cy plus d or whatever, something like that. In which case you'd have to expand and simplify um, these two brackets. But in this case, this is perfectly fine to leave it in this form. So there's the answer for three, part A. Now for part B, we're told that um, given the same circle, we know the circle has center 2, 5, and we, have, we know that the point 8, negative 3 lies in the circle. We also know the radius of the circle is 10. We worked that in part 1. It says find and the equation of the tangent to the circle C at P, giving your answers in the form AX plus BY plus C equals 0. So the tangent of the circle. So let me make a little diagram so we can illustrate what we mean by the tangent to the circle. So let's say this is the center of the circle, okay? Um, there we have the circle itself. Now, we know the center of the circle has coordinates 2, 5, as they told us. And we know that the, um, the point P, 8, negative 3, okay? So 8, negative 3 lies on this line. So somewhere over here, let's say, let's say this is the point P. Let's say that's 8, negative 3. Just roughly drawing it, okay? It says here that the tangent to the curve at P, we need to find its equation. So I'm going to draw a line which touches the curve at P, but doesn't actually cut through it. So this line here, when I draw it properly, okay, it touches the curve at the point that I've called P, all right, without actually cutting through the, the circle, not the curve, the circle. So it cuts through this, it just brushes past the circle at the point P. That's called the tangent to the, to the circle at point P. That's what the tangent is. Okay, so one of the things we know about tangents to circles is that the uh, angle that they make with the, ray, with the center of the circle at the point where they touch the circle is 90 degrees. So I know that that's 90 degrees. Okay, so this is the, this is the line that I'm trying to call, this is the tangent, okay? Um, that's the tangent to the circle, right? Now, to find the equation of any line, to find the equation of a line, a straight line, we need two things. 
We need the gradient of the line, so we need the gradient of that tangent. And two, we need any point on that line, any point on the, on the, on the line we're trying to find the equation of. Now for the tangent, we have that point. We have the point 8, negative 3. The point P lies on the tangent because it is you know, where the tangent touches the circle. So if I can work out the gradient of the tangent, I can work out the gradient of this line. Now we know that this line here is perpendicular to the tangent. Okay, and this is the normal. So we can find the gradient of the normal to P, which is the line which passes. Of course, the normal to P is going to pass through the center of the circle because the tangent meets the radius at 90 degrees. So I know if I find the gradient between these two points, between the points 2, 5, and 8, negative 3, I will have then found the gradient of the normal. And if I know the gradient of the normal, I can work out the gradient of the tangent. It will be the negative reciprocal of it. So the gradient of the normal is a change in y, which is 5 minus minus 3 over 2, take away 8. All right, the change in y over the change in x. That's going to be 5 plus 3, which is 8, over 2 minus 6, which is negative. Sorry, 2 minus 8, which is negative 6. That gives you negative 4 over 3. All right, so therefore, the gradient of the tangent is going to be the negative reciprocal, which means you take this, you change its sign, and you turn it upside down. Okay, the gradient of the normal times the gradient of the tangent should always give you negative 1. So they have to be negative reciprocals. Okay, so now I know the gradient of the tangent. I can use my formula. I like to use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Some people like to use y equals mx plus c. All right, in the end, we want to write our answer in this form. So it's going to be, I mean, I think more efficient to use this method, but I, will, I can show you both, no problem. So here we have y minus y1, the y coordinate of the point, which is minus 3 equals m, which we know the, the gradient that we're, we're, we're using is 3 quarters, times x minus the x coordinate of the point, okay, which lies on the line, which is 8. Okay, remember we, we're using the point p, which is 8, negative 3, and we're using the gradient of the tangent, which is 3 over 4. Gradient of the tangent, not the normal, the tangent. Okay, so that's going to give us y plus 3 equals 3 over 4, okay, times x minus 8. What I can do now to get rid of this fraction because we want to give the answer in the form of ax plus by plus c equals 0, where a, b, and c are all integers. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 4 to get rid of the fraction. 4y plus 12 equals, and I can multiply this by 3, 3x minus 24. So now I'm going to write it in that form. Now what I'll do is I'll write it such that all the terms are where the x term is positive. You don't have to do that. I just prefer to have the x term as positive. So 3x minus 4y, and you have minus 24 minus 12, which is minus 36 equals 0. So therefore, the equation is going to be, you can write it in a, the way that they want, 3x minus 4y minus 36 equals 0. That's the form that they want it in. We could also use y equals mx plus c, which a lot of students prefer, although I try to gently kind of push them towards um, the other method, which I, I, I think is more efficient, especially when you get to um, P3 and P4, your gradients start becoming a bit more complicated. But we can still use this method. We have the y value of the point, which is negative 3 equals m, which is 3 quarters, times x, which is 8, plus c. The 2 and the 8 cancel, leaving you with 4, and 8 cancel, leaving you with 2. So you have negative 3 equals 6 plus c. So 6 is equal to negative 9. c is equal to negative 9, sorry. So we can say y equals... And we're going to have the gradient, which is 3 quarters times x minus 9. And we want to express it in this form. So we want to get rid of the fraction. So we multiply everything by 4. So we get 4y equals 3x minus 4 nines are 36. And then bringing everything onto one side, we have 0 equals 36 minus 4y minus 36. So we can say 3x minus 4y minus 36 equals 0. So exactly the same answer just using a slightly different method. I mean, both of them are perfectly fine. There's no, no issue with both of them. Okay, I just personally prefer this method here. That's fine. And there we have the answer to question number three, part B. And that concludes this question on um, this circles question. Now, this is a pretty straightforward question, very kind of textbook style question, nothing really different or 
complicated about it, so that's good. Um, other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist which appears over here at the end of the video. Other questions from the topic of circles from P2, you can find it in the playlist that will appear in this region. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link over here and you can watch uh, this video that will appear, its link will appear over here to show you how to use my channel um, effectively, even if you're doing Cambridge A-levels or you're doing IGCSEs, okay, or you want to find stuff from P3, P4, or you know P1, M1, S1, whatever, you can find whatever I have, uh, you know, the difference I have efficiently by watching that video. Thank you for watching and see you soon.